I asked the new AI powered Bing to build some Blazor applications for me so I don't have to do it. And the result is just crazy, but make sure to watch until the end to find out if we are going to lose our jobs. So the first thing I did was asking Bing, how would you write a get HTTP call to get the current weather information with Blazor Web Assembly? Beginner stuff, and let's see what Bing tells me. Here, what I like is already that it tells me what it's actually searching for, and then it generates some answers. And this answer, well, this is the typical weather forecast example, right? So nothing really interesting for me, of course, this answers my question. Here I see get from JSON async. This is how you would do that. But I wanted to get really the current weather information. So maybe I have to change this question a little. It also explains what it is actually doing here. But then I wanted to know, do you know a free weather API I can use for my Blazor application? And this is where things get interesting because here are three suggestions. And the last one here, Open Mateo tells me, or Bing tells me that with this thing here, you can use it without an API key registration, right? Here, it tells me I uh, need an API key, same here, a personal key, but this thing, this thing should work out of the box without registering for an account or anything like that. So then I asked Bing here, could you show me how to use Open Mateo to get the current weather for New York City, for instance, with a Blazor WebAssembly application? And then it is really getting exciting because it tells me the exact steps that I have to do. So first I can use the Open Mateo API and this is already the call I need to get latitude and longitude values for New York City in this example. And then this is the next call I have to run to, to get the forecast information already. And in essence, I can just copy this and paste it here in the address bar. And then I already get this information here. Of course, I can open the dev tools. Let's just reload this thing. And uh, then here I get the preview and I already get the current weather information. So this is awesome, but I wanted this in a Blazor application, right? So now it is telling me what to do. I get the, the JSON result. And then down here comes the code. And now let's let's just copy this complete thing here without really having a look and pasting it into Visual Studio. So I created a new page here, paste this thing, run this. We are getting an error and I already see the error here. I opened the network tab before. You see that for the latitude and also the longitude values, we're using a comma here. So this can be something on my machine. Don't know, not really sure about that. So if you experience something different, then please tell me that in the comments, but we can fix this real quick. And this is where you have to say, this is not the fault of Bing or ChatGPT or whatever, because the values here are really uh, double values with a dot or a period character. So what we have to do here is we just parse this to culture or to string and then culture info. Let me add the reference system globalization and then invariant culture and the same thing here for the longitude. Save that, restart the app. And then what do we get? Well, here it says zero Fahrenheit. I don't think this is correct. What does it tell us here? We get the current weather and here it says 58.9. So what's the problem here? Hmm. Well, let's, let's have a look again. I have to say we are already pretty far, right? So there is an error, but still we've got a working, a small working application that pretty much gets the current weather information. The problem that I see here is could be these, these types here. It already says us other fields omitted for brevity. Maybe there is something wrong here. So let's go back to our chat. There we are. It explains us what's going on here. But uh, again, it tells us other fields omitted for brevity. So then I asked Bing, please show me all fields of the weather forecast class and the current weather class. And this is what it tells me. Sure, I can show you all the fields. So in essence, we could now copy this thing and this thing. But I already know that this is not correct. I copy pasted this before and here it tells me and this is 
again, something very interesting. It tells me where it got the information from and I get a link. So now I can go to the documentation myself and have a look here. And when I here now scroll a bit further down, then I see these are the values that uh, Bing or ChatGPT is getting from this website. But when I scroll further down, then here I see the real result that is actually coming. And of course, I also see it is not temperature 2M, it is just temperature. So this is a really quick fix. We just rename this thing, save it again, restart our application and again an error. Let's have a quick look again. Yeah, of course, 58.9. Here it's an integer, say double and restart this thing for hopefully the last time and now we get the perfect correct value. So this was the first try with Bing and Blazor and it already, I know we had to fix some tiny errors here, but already in a couple of minutes really, we get a complete working application with the get calls, with the more or less correct types and we get the current weather for New York City. And I think this is really, really great. Then the next example was, I wanted to create a calculator application, pretty basic calculator application with Blazor WebAssembly. So I asked Bing to do that. And the first thing it tells me is, well, how to do that, but without any code examples. It is asking me if I wanna know how to set up the development environment here, but I really wanted to see some code. So I asked, could you please show me the code for such a calculator application? and it did. So here is an edit form. Again, if you're a total beginner, maybe you have no idea what an edit form is in Blazor WebAssembly. So you need some basic knowledge, at least to make this work. And still you can ask how this uh, code works here. It gives me some uh, options. So you can say yes, please. And then it is telling us what is actually going on here. And then we can go further down. Uh, showing us other edit forms. But what was really interesting for me, because I tried this before with chat GPT and not with Bing, really interesting was this code snippet here. So just the edit form with the code block. Let me just copy and paste this thing. Here it is in a new page, Calc Razor. I just added the page directive here and also the forms reference here because we're using an edit form here. And this is an empty Blazor solution. So the new empty Blazor WebAssembly template of .NET 7. I would say again, let's just run this thing. And this is the result. Not that exciting, but does it work? Well, let's see. I enter two here plus three. And it does, I just unfocus and this is really, really great. This, this did not work with chat GPT before I can really enter whatever I want here, change the operator and it is doing its magic. This just works out of the box. So in a couple of seconds, you get an example calculator application. But now what I really wanted to know is how do I actually create an application that looks like the Windows calculator, for instance, you know, this thing here. I wanted something similar to this thing, but just the standard calculator. So let's have a look again. Real quick, the .NET Web Academy starts soon. It's an online program where we cover all things .NET web development with Blazor, Git, Azure, and more. Pretty much everything you need to know if you wanna land a job in the .NET web development world. And also the exclusive .NET Web Academy community for all your questions. And if you wanna be the first to know when it opens and if you wanna get a discount, then make sure to subscribe to my newsletter or check out the link below to get a spot on the waiting list. Thank you very much. And now back to the tutorial. My question was, could you show me the code of a calculator app that looks like the Windows calculator built with Blazor WebAssembly? Bing is doing the following. It is explaining what you can do or what it found. And then, well, there are different options here for us. And it is asking me, do you want a standard, a scientific or a programmer calculator? And then I get the options here and I just told Bing, give me the standard calculator, please, because my hopes weren't really high. And then it tells me again, what it is, what it is doing, found some web pages, so where it got its information from. And then it says, do you want me to show you some code snippets? And uh, well, it's funny that it that this works because it was asking me uh, from which page 
And one of the options was, yes, show me code snippets from web page index. So I just clicked it and then, well, this was the answer then, but still it worked somehow. Here we see the actual calculator razor, right? With buttons and the code block. Lots and lots of stuff going on here. And then also the CSS. And this was interesting because I was sure we need some CSS stuff. And when I did this with ChatGPT a couple of weeks ago, it, well, the design kind of worked, but the functions did not. So this was the ending. It is asking me, I hope this helps. Do you have any other questions? I didn't because I just copy and pasted this thing. And here it is a second page calc two. I just really just entered the page directive here. And what I also added, of course, is the CSS. So here in the app CSS, I copy pasted uh, the classes, calculator display and so on. And when we run this, this is the result. It looks already pretty amazing. I know this border is kind of strange. I'm pretty sure we can fix this when we know some CSS. But what I can do now is, I don't know, one plus two equals three. It works. You can reload eight divided by seven. What's that? All right, another try. It just works. And this is this is really crazy. I love this. Now this does work really, really well, but we are not going to lose our jobs, at least not very, very soon, because you still have to know what you're actually doing here. You have to know what questions to ask. It was already the same with ChatGPT. Then again, you already have to know what is actually going on there with the code and with all the technologies you want to use. I'm pretty sure you also can use the Bing search now and ChatGPT, all that AI powered stuff that is trending now. If you're a beginner and you want to learn how to code, so either way, it does work. But don't worry, guys, you're still necessary. We need software developers. So if you want to see the comparison to chat GPT, in particular with the calculator application, make sure to watch the video here on the screen. Please tell me in the comments, what do you think about these new AI powered searches in regards to web development, software development, coding in essence? And do you want to see more? Please tell me that in the comments and I hope I see you next time. Take care.